Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter Rise. And in this one, I want to go over nine things that you might not know about the Rise demo. Some handy tips, things you can factor in both during combat and exploration, and just in general things that you might not have noticed since they can be off the beaten track. So if you guys do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know if you guys have come across any sort of uh, sneaky tips yourself, things that I didn't mention, and of course be sure to keep it locked for plenty more Rise coverage. But in at number one, the first one is throwing bombs. This one, some of you guys might have seen this already if you want to do those trick shots, but some people have definitely missed this. If you select your bombs on your item wheel and you are in the air, you can press Y to use them, and in doing so, it'll see you throw your bombs downwards. Now, the behavior is different depending on what you throw. If you throw small bombs, you throw them forwards. If you throw kunai, you throw them forwards. But if you throw the large barrel bombs, you can basically do a basil geese and drop it down below, drop it on your teammates, drop it on the monster, and you can do a lot of cool, stylish kills. It's also worth noting, generally speaking, when you do this, you get sent flying. If you want to avoid being blown up by the bomb itself, then what you want to do is throw it, and as soon as you finish doing that, press B to basically jump in the air, and you should be able to jump out the way of the explosion, thus not getting sent flying in the process. Moving on from there to number two, this one we did actually do a detailed video on, so if you guys want to know more, then I'll link it down below, but I thought it'd be worth mentioning in this one, just in case you've been sleeping on it, but do not ignore the beetles, the dung beetles around the map. There are different types, fire beetles, thunder beetles, water beetles, and ice beetles, and collecting these will allow you to use them as items on the monsters, and it applies elemental blights to the monsters, so we are basically giving them a taste of their own medicine. If you want to make the monster burn, if you want to inflict it with thunder blight, which allows you to do KO damage, then uh, they're very useful. Definitely check out the video if you guys didn't know about that, because they are incredibly game-changing and things that you should definitely be using, so uh, it's worth taking that slight detour on the way to your hunt to pick up that beetle. Moving on from there to number three, you can get multiple uses of the Great Wirebug. Some of you guys, if you've been playing in multiplayer hunts, you might come across those situations where you see a Great Wirebug in front of you, and if your teammate takes it, it seemingly disappears. However, when we first did this, I thought maybe they were just single use, and thus if you weren't there first, you missed out on the opportunity. It is however worth noting that sometimes if you see them outside the bush and they've been used, you simply need to gather or investigate the bush nearby, or the kind of shrubs, and invariably, the Great Wirebug will then come out, and you can then use it again. So even if your teammate seemingly takes it in front of you, it is not gone, you just need to check for it, and you can then use it as a map shortcut. Speaking of which, moving on from there to point number four, linking in with the Great Wirebugs, they are often tied and kind of positioned in very strategic places, so you can link multiple of them together. There's a fair few on the map. One example would be at the bottom of area 13, the waterfall. If you time it correctly, you can basically zip from one great wire bug to the next and cover great distances in an incredibly short space of time. Next up, number five. Some of you guys may have noticed this already, some of you may not, but this is incredibly handy. Maybe not so much in the demo, but going into the full game. If you've ever noticed that blue icon beneath a monster in the top right hand corner, that appears when a monster is basically ready to be captured, ready to sort of sleep. If you guys think back to, say, World, it used to be a skull that would appear on the monster icon in the minimap. This is now how it's depicted. So when you're fighting a monster, typically when you see this, you'll also notice them limping, which of course is the old school Monster Hunter signal that it's ready to capture. But the fact that they've thrown that in into the UI now makes it even easier to know if it's safe to capture the monster. Next up, number six, this one is a sneaky tip for those of you guys that are playing uh, mid-combat. If you decide that suddenly you need to sharpen your weapon, and I mean, you know, sharpening your weapon is never normally a difficult task, but sometimes you do need to find the right opening so you don't get blasted with a fireball or something like that. However, now we have an internal opening in the form of the Palamut. You can mid-combat call your Palamut, get on the back of it, run around and sharpen your weapon for a much easier, much safer, much more mobile way to sharpen and get back into combat. Next up in at number seven, for those of you guys that have maybe been robbed by the Melixes in the game, if you go around there are the sort of little black cats, and much like in older games, if they hit you they will steal items from you, but much like in previous games you can also go back and find their base camp to regain your items. In the Shrine Ruins map, that is located very near area number three on the map, you need to climb the long set of vines, which will then take you straight to the Melix camp. You can of course go here to reclaim your items, and more importantly if you happen to be gathering in that general vicinity, you can also pick up some barrels here, sometimes small, sometimes large. So if you happen to want to be crafting more large barrel bombs for some tricks in the game, then uh, this is a good place to go. 
After that, in a number eight, for those of you guys that want to pet your dog and your cat, just to clarify the steps for this one, what you want to do is you want to go and use your D-pad, the sort of action menu now, to select the weight function for your Palico and your Palamut. Doing so will basically put them into like a non-combat passive state, and when you've done that, provided your weapon is away, if you then walk over to them you have the option to interact with your palamute and your palico and you can do a variety of different things pet them give them a treat shake their hand that kind of stuff but that is how you play with your companions <laughs> my trusty canine And then finally, a last tip in at number nine for wyvern riding. To get the most out of it, don't forget that of course, you know, typically you'll run around with the monster, you will then yeet it into the wall a number of times so that it falls over. However, if you wanna get the most damage out of it, then what you wanna do is take advantage of the second monster. Keep in mind, sometimes if you get on the back of a monster and you ride it to another monster, what you can do, if you yeet your monster into another one, it will instantly put the other monster into a wyvern riding state. So if you want to maximize potential damage, then what you would do is get in the back of a monster, yeet it into the wall twice, then use your evade to do the final yeet into the other monster. That would then knock the monster you're riding down, put the other monster into the state, which you could then climb in the back of, and then use attacks to deal even more damage to the down monster. So that's just a way to be slightly more efficient with your wyvern riding. And I mentioned this in the previous video, but I think honestly, when Capcom spoke briefly about the rampage mode, they said that we will be speaking more about it in greater detail later. But the fact they've introduced wyvern riding and the fact we have like a mode where seemingly we have lots of monsters running towards us, I genuinely think this is gonna become incredibly important because if we're gonna have a sort of siege situation where we're fighting five different monsters, I think wyvern riding is gonna play a very big part in that. Anyway, that speculation to one side. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments down below if these were useful to you. And of course, again, keep it locked for plenty more Rise coverage. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 Paradise Central and Vestmore streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.